All right, good morning, friends and family. We are doing geometry. Woohoo! Jarvis is doing geometry. I'm being supportive. We just got out the old Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're using a real calculator because doing this kind of math on phone calculators. Can yeah, my, my phone doesn't even have a squared button. What? I was going to have to do <laughs> like 24 times 24. <laughs> okay, anyways, math nerd. Um, we are laying out where we're going to put the footers for the utility room next to the yurt. So that's what's going on. And, and that is just me kind of checking what level looks like coming off of it. So, why were we doing geometry? Because to get a good layout... Oh, the kitty is going crazy. What is kitty doing? He's trying to get the top of a... Okay, a, so for people that don't <laughs> like math, they can watch the kitty. Okay, I was distracted. we are doing... Um, we need to make sure we measure right angles correctly. And in the construction trade, sometimes you'll see guys basically with two tape measures because they're using the, the 3, 4, 5 rule of a right triangle or Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to make sure they're hitting right angles by taking two tape measure measurements to make sure that the third one is exactly right for a right triangle. So that's what we're going to do coming off of the door here. We just did the math for the width of that door frame was 44 inches. We need to come exactly 24 inches out. So we checked and we should get 50.1 inches as the hypotenuse. So maybe we'll need Arya's help for an extra pair of hands, but we'll basically be using two tape measures to get our starting corner point. And we'll do that a few more times to make sure we lay out this grid correctly. And where we're going with this over the next few days is footers. Just like you see under the yurt, we're gonna do a rectangular grid of nine footers to support this utility building right here. And Tina and I can definitely do this ourselves. Yay. We can do this ourselves. And then that'll give it time to cure and be totally ready for the next time Gare shows up and we build a little building right there. That's gonna It'll be sweet. Time for that. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Hello, friends and family. We are having a fun day with some not so fun parts. Mm -hmm. We took care of Chicken Nugget this morning. We calmly slaughtered him. We used a cone, put him head down through the cone to gently bleed him out from the neck. Sorry if that's too graphic, but that's just how you do it. But Tina can have bad reactions to blood and stuff, so. Even though I'm a nurse. So I was holding the cone, Jarvis cut his neck to bleed him out and stuff. And I was fine for a while and then I started to feel nauseated and I went and sat down in the dirt and then I guess and I then And then all of a sudden I turned over and she was keeled over on the ground so that's always scary to see. Yeah. Um, so we just laid by her and held her face <laughs> until she came to which took 
20 seconds or something? Yeah. It took oh. a while, yeah. Yeah. It was not fun. So Tina will not be a close participating member of chicken slaughtering anymore. I'm sure once it's yeah. just a carcass and it's time to process it, you'll oh, be fine. fine. But she definitely doesn't do well with a, a bleeding animal. So, yeah. lesson learned there. Um, so we got that taken care of and then I just had to do work for quite a while, meetings and computer work and stuff and then right when I was done Arya came in and showed me this super cool thing. <laughs> Arya what is this? A diagram of our orchard. So they walked through the orchard where the chickens hang out and previous owners had planted more types of trees than we initially realized. So Arya talk about what there are. So I took one leaf and I put the amount of the, the, the type and then yeah, all so the types. So we have pear, there's four pears, one plum, three apples, one hazelnut, and one English walnut. Fun, I knew about the pears and apples, but I didn't know we have a hazelnut, a walnut. So fun. So we're gonna go look at those right now. And James is doing James things. What are you doing, bud? Something. <laughs> Spinning around in the tire swing. Spinning the tire swing. So the chicken herd is much calmer already with chicken nugget gone as far as I can tell. What do you think, sweetie? Yeah, they've been happy. Because, yeah, the, the problem is chicken nugget actually was drawing blood on the hens. Mm -hmm. Like biting, biting their combs and they're bleeding. And we were not happy with that. Nope. Gandalf never does that. So chicken nugget needed to go. In hindsight, we could have done it earlier. His body's so little, it's hardly worth the meat we got off of him. <laughs> but we, we need the practice anyway, so I went ahead and dressed him out as a little... Tiny, so, how many pounds like do a, you I, I don't know, two or three, maybe four? I, I'm not a good judge of that, but it's just so much smaller than like a Costco chicken. That, <laughs> that, yeah, that it's are pretty funny. Really plump. I think part of my problem this morning, we did it first thing before even eating breakfast, and I'm pregnant, which affects my... Yeah head more. That's okay. Yeah. Hopefully Poor we'll tender-hearted <laughs> Tina. I She's the nice really did one. not like chicken nugget, but I still felt for him. Yeah, it's not like we were high five and saying, let's kill this rude no, guy. Not it's, at all. It's, it's, it's serious business to kill an animal. It's sobering. It's calm. We talked through, James was with us. Sorry, you didn't want to be there, but James was with us and we talked about we're being calm. We said, thank you, chicken nugget, for doing your part on the farm. Sorry you're not a hen that gets to stay and lay eggs for us. <laughs> and since you're a rooster that we don't need, then you got to go. So we took care of that and we should show them the exciting new development about some of our younger chickens and then show them the goats. Okay, let's go. All right, this is the first of a segment we're gonna call Creature Report. Creature <laughs> Report. Creature <laughs> Report. <laughs> so first creatures. Harry and Ron. How have Harry and Ron been doing? Good, whiny butt. Good boy. So they're eating. They look really healthy. We're happy with what they're doing in this pasture. There's more and more stalks without leaves on them by the day. There's plenty more for them to eat, so we'll keep them here a little longer. But the, the good things are they, they look healthy and they're eating the plants we want them to eat, which is everything in here, especially the blackberries. Um, so the one kind of problem, not a huge problem, but they they whine at us when they see us. They want us to give them attention and give them grain, but they have an important job to do to be going out around the farm eating blackberries. They, their job isn't to be our pets. We're trying to train them to not whine at us by not feeding them grain constantly, not petting them constantly. We just kind of give them their water, make sure they're okay, and then every few days we'll give them grain, and if they calm down on whining, maybe we'll pet them and give them grain more, but we've got to train them not to whine at us. Our neighbor and friend had goats, but she recently got rid of them. One of the reasons was they were stressing her out because there's a bunch of whiny goats always wanting something from her, and that caused her a lot of stress, so we don't want to end up down that path. <laughs> So one of the other things we might do is just move them further away from us if they're whiny all the time. They can go far away. We can give you a close-up. Oh yeah, they, they want to... We skipped grain yesterday, but they want to feed them grain today. I can go get them. Just get a handful that you can handle. Mm -hmm. And 
don't spill it all, Jane. Remember? All right, so to summarize goat status, healthy and whiny. So we have had our four and five month old, we call them teenager chickens, are starting to lay, which is really exciting. So we'll go out and have a normal size egg like this. But then this is a little cute teeny egg. We have some California grays and they lay these really white eggs. And then uh, this is uh, Sarah's egg. She's a buff Orpington. A buff Orpington laid, laid egg. So we have three little tiny eggs, and we've found one each in the last three days. So we're getting a beautiful array of all these different colors. This is super exciting because our herd is some old ladies and some very young girls. <laughs> And we're not getting very many eggs yeah, relative to the amount of chickens we have. But it, these these four month old hens get six, seven, eight months old and start laying a lot of eggs. That's going to be really exciting. So we're very happy about that. And I don't know if you hear, that's a whiny goat noise. So that's why I don't want to give them grain. Because as soon as we leave from giving them grain, <laughs> they whine like babies. So they, And it sounds really human-like, which I think pulls at our heartstrings a little more than... Like yeah. the chicken balking or Yeah, something. I think it's no more grain and except for when we move them because that is going to drive me crazy hearing them whine <laughs> like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Kitty report. Okay. Kitty report. Kitty report. The kitties continue to just play all the time. We suspect they might be catching and eating mice because we're seeing less mice activity. Oh. And... The mice might be some nighttime hunters. Oh, there's a drowsy kitty. Oh, sleepy boy. <laughs> I think Tux really sleeps hard because he's always yeah. so drowsy. Do you like to sleep? So, super happy with the kittens. We got flea medicine and gave them their first flea treatment. We, not that we saw fleas, but just this stuff is preventative and lasts a month or more. So, on um, that went. And yeah, the kitties are doing great. What else is noteworthy? We just give them dry food, so if they want wet food, they need to catch mice. But I gave them uh, I gave them chicken nuggets, liver, and heart today, and they were excited about that. So that's Isn't something that good? eliminate a little bit of waste, and the chick the kittens liked it. I'm sure it's super healthy for them. I give them a little bit of leftover milk for my cereal because. Oh, Tina! Don't spoil these kitties too much. They need to be <laughs> hunters. We did it with our kitties growing up too. So that's kitty report. Okay, chicken here report. is the chicken flock. The main thing that's changed is we've combined them all into one big paddock. The young birds, all the dark black ones, they're all Gandalf's babies that if you saw that we hatched about 20 chicks out, what at this point over three months ago. They're doing really good. It's almost time to separate boys from girls, but um, we really enjoy them. They're nice looking birds. And real quick, so this girl here, that's Sarah. She's one of the four-month-old birds we were talking about. She's we, the oldest. We think she just laid her first egg. And those two white birds out there, we think, laid their first eggs. They're Chicken Nugget's sisters. Chicken Nugget was supposed to be a girl. If he was, he would still be here. And these are all, most of these here are the old ladies that are past their prime but still laying a little bit. James loves to pick up Specky. Gandalf is, of course, our gray boy running out there. Yeah, the chickens are doing really well. Really happy to have them. Really like have, moving them around in this area. This is where Tina and the kids did that, um, that tree, tree survey. So Tina said that that tree there is the plum tree. Now, where's the al the walnut and the it's hazel? It's in the back corner. You can go, go right Right, like past, past the pen back there? Yeah, on the mm -hmm. other side. Okay, so Tina said that there's a walnut and a hazelnut back there. The walnut's very small. Okay. The hazelnut gave me an indication. It's a ton of 
It's probably like seven or eight small. Okay, looks kind of like a shrub almost. Small shrub, and then um, its leaves have kind of more of a curled look to them. Okay. So, okay. You can see some that. Yeah. And the walnut, it could be an ash, but I think it has some buds on it that could be walnuts. Okay. Cool. And the leaves are slightly different than the organ ash we've been seeing around our property. So the creatures are doing well. If the goats are too whiny, close to us at the shop there, we might actually move them out. We're, we're thinking about even trying just having the goats in the same pen as the chickens. That could be fun. I think they would all get along fine. It's not like goats eat chickens or something weird. So there's plenty of blackberry and stuff out here. So we're thinking about trying that. Anything else? Any other creature report? James? Bunny! Oh, our bunny. Let's go look at our bunny. More than she wanted to. There's our girl. Luna the bunny. She's about a year now. She just hit a year or will be this month. Yeah. I think it was July 29th. Oh, look how snuggly she is. Arya's been doing a good job. Arya will come out here by herself and sit in the pen with her and pet her for a while. She's a really cozy rabbit. James is rubbing his cheek. Oh. Lettuce butts and apple cores, apple cores and carrot some ends. Carrot ends, yep. She's a good girl. Does she have a favorite, Arya? Out of all of those, she really likes lettuce, cabbage, and apple a ton. Okay. She just loves everything. <laughs> She's chubby. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching our creature report. Creature report. <laughs> creature report. <laughs> Okay, I decided to try digging by hand first for these nine footer locations because the excavator bucket is two feet wide and a, an overly big hole is a problem because we want to isolate the concrete to a fairly small area and keep the rest of the dirt around it very compact. So I'm going to do my best to dig this by hand. It's not going to be fun and if it's terrible, I'll use the excavator and then reduce the size of the hole afterwards. We'll see. Okay, that was the last hole. Hooray! Nine holes. Nine holes. It'll make a, what, let's see, eight foot by 14 foot rectangular structure. There will be a two foot offset from the door, and then it'll run at a right angle that that door runs at. How are you doing, sweetie pie? Good. I need your help for my flag pull for my American flag. All right, American flag. It's almost 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. We are going to celebrate finishing up this digging with some steaks tonight. Let's go see what else Tina's making. How'd you do? Oh, I'm all done digging. Tina's That's making amazing. a. You're making your famous kale salad. Kale salad. Mushroom rice and big old ribeye steaks. Yeah. What should I fire up the grill? Is it almost time? Not yet. We need. It's gonna be about 20 minutes till we can eat. Okay. Okie dokie. Excited. James, how how have you been wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants the whole day? You don't feel hot? And a pajama shirt. And a pajama shirt. What's that about? All day. All day. 